In this video, we are going to conquer counting atoms. We want to be experts at counting atoms. Okay, so let's conquer counting atoms. There are several things that we need to be able to do in chemistry, and counting atoms is one of them. And this allows us to be able to balance chemical equations and also calculate molar mass. So let's look at this formula right here. We have potassium nitrate. So in a chemical formula, you have the symbols of an element, and then we have subscripts. Three is a subscript. We do not write ones in chemical formulas. Those are understood that they are there. So I like to list the atoms according to their symbol. So I have potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen. And then I write how many I have next to it. So potassium, I just have one because there's a one there. And then nitrogen, I have one. And then oxygen, I have three because of this subscript three right there. So even though there is no subscript there, it is an understood one. Okay, so not too bad. Let's look at another one. So let's look at calcium hydroxide. Now hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, but when we're counting atoms, we're looking at each individual atom. So in this formula, we have calcium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Calcium has one atom. Oxygen is in parentheses, so we need to talk about that. Oxygen is in this parentheses. It has this understood one written there. And then we have to take that one and multiply it by the two that's on the outside of the parentheses. So that gives us a total of two oxygens. I like to kind of box my answers or circle my answers so it's pretty clear what the answer is. And then the next and last atom we have in this formula is hydrogen. Hydrogen has an understood one here. So we have to take that one, multiply it by this two on the outside, and that also gives us two oxygens. So in this formula of calcium hydroxide, we have one calcium, two oxygen, and two hydrogen. Okay, so let's look at another formula in another situation. Okay, let's look at potassium nitrate again. So we've counted these atoms before, and we had one potassium, one nitrogen, and three oxygen. But what if there was a coefficient of two in front of this formula? This coefficient changes the number of atoms. So let's list potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen again. So in this situation, we know that there's one potassium, but we have to take this one and multiply it by that subscript of two, giving us a total of two potassiums. Nitrogen is the same thing. There's one nitrogen. We multiply it by the coefficient of two, giving us two nitrogens. Now with oxygen, oxygen has a subscript of three. We take that subscript of three and we multiply it by the coefficient of two, giving us a total of six oxygen. What this coefficient of two is telling us is that we have two KNO3s. So we have one KNO3, and then we have another one. So basically when you're counting the atoms, you have to multiply it by the coefficient of two to get the total number of atoms present. 
Let's look at another one. Aluminum phosphate. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. And I'm telling you what the names of these formulas are, and that kind of gives you practice with knowing how to name these. Aluminum phosphate is an ionic compound because there is a metal and we have a polyatomic ion. Okay, so let's count the atoms. We have aluminum, phosphorus, and oxygen. So aluminum has two atoms because of that subscript of two. Now phosphorus and oxygen are in parentheses. So we have to be careful and we have to watch our numbers. Phosphorus has a one by it. So we know there's a one times this subscript that's outside the parentheses. So one times three is three. So phosphorus has three atoms. Oxygen has a subscript of four next to it. Then we have to take that subscript of four and multiply it by three, giving us a total of 12. So in this formula, I have two aluminums, three phosphoruses, and 12 oxygens. Okay, let's do one more. So we will look at calcium phosphate. So here's that polyatomic ion again. But this time, I'm going to put a coefficient of three in front of calcium. So let's count our atoms, list out the elements, calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen. So when we look at calcium, we see that there's a subscript of three. We have to take this subscript of three and multiply it by that coefficient that's in front of the whole formula. So that gives us a total of nine calcium atoms. Phosphorus is in parentheses. So we have a one subscript next to phosphorus and we have to multiply it by this two on the outside of the parentheses. That gives us a total of two. Then we have to multiply it by the coefficient of three, giving us a total of six phosphorus atoms. And our last one is oxygen. So oxygen has a subscript of four. We multiply that by the two on the outside of the parentheses, giving us a total of eight. Then we take eight, we have to multiply eight times our coefficient of three, giving us a total of 24 oxygen atoms. That's a lot of oxygen. Okay, so we've done some examples with coefficients and without coefficients. We've done examples with parentheses and without parentheses. So I hope after seeing these examples, you feel that you have conquered counting atoms.